Hi guys, Evan from Atlantic Outboard here. Today we're going to do your digital delivery on your new Rebalo R230. First uh, things first, right, your swim ladder. Okay, you lift up this latch right here, three-step ladder comes out, uh, you undo this bungee cord, and you can easily access uh, yourself from the water. Okay, freshwater shower is right here. Okay, we're going to talk about where that fills and everything in a minute. Uh, rinse yourself off by simply pushing in this back button. This slides back in, out of the way, and up click right there. If you come over here, you'll see off to the uh, port side of the transom well, that black uh, screw knob, and I'll unscrew that for you to show you. This is your raw water pump, or excuse me, raw water wash down, okay? So you simply unscrew that, hook your hose up to here, and if you have the switch on the dash, which we will talk about, this will take seawater and come out of the hose. So say you're fishing, get some blood on the boat, you want to rinse it off really quick, you simply screw your hose into here, turn on the pump, and you can wash away right there. Now, if you look in front of the motor, you can open up the inspection plate right here, okay? In there is going to be your through hole fitting for your raw water wash down, okay? One other thing I want to mention is right here, this is where you fill your fresh water tank, okay? So to use your fresh water wash down, you need to have that tank full, full of fresh water and have the pump on and you'll be able to use that. Okay, guys, uh, one of the most important things about this boat is understanding the battery switch. If you open this compartment right here, you're going to see the switch. You have up is off, to the left is one, which is your house battery, down is two, one and two, excuse me. So that's your engine and your house combined as one. I recommend running the engine uh, on one and two. That way, the engine will charge both batteries. Now, if you want to just have your engine batteries on, you simply switch it to two right there. Okay, so we'll leave these batteries on. Down here is your breaker panel, DC main, so if you don't have any power going to your helm area, you can simply try that breaker. You have your auto bilge breaker right there, and then your stereo breaker right there as well. Okay, so if any of those items stop working, the first thing I would check is make sure those breakers aren't popped. Moving up to the dash, we're going to talk about the engine controls for a second. Uh, this has a 250 Yamaha VMAX 4-stroke, okay? Like any outboard, you have your lanyard that plugs in right here, okay? The engine will not start if the lanyard's not in or if, it's, or if it's in forward or reverse. The boat has to be in neutral. The lanyard has to be on in order for it to start, okay? Your key goes in right here. One click turns the key to the on position. That'll look, turn on your gauge, okay? One more crank, click. You can crank the engine until it starts. Once it does that, you simply let go of the key, and the engine will continue to run. Okay. All right, guys, this boat has two trim switches for the outboard, okay? One is on the control box right here, up and down. Obviously, you know what those are. And you have one on the outboard itself. If you're trailering the boat and you want to adjust the trim back there, you can. Let's run through the switches on the boat. You have your horn right here with your breaker off to the starboard side of it. You have your nav and your anchor light, okay? Nav, obviously, is your red and green up in the front. Uh, anchor light is up on top. You use the anchor light, obviously, when you're anchoring at night. Uh, courtesy lights are the blue LEDs throughout the boat uh, to light up the deck. Uh, live well light, okay, we're going to get to your live well in a minute, but if you want to engage the light on it, you simply push the live well light button. Spreader light, with these guys right here, okay, um, pretty self-explanatory, hit the spreader light switch and the spreader lights light up. Uh, underwater lights, if your boat is equipped with underwater lights, we're going to power them to this switch right here. They're called UW lights, okay, underwater, you hit that button, that'll light up uh, the underwater lights right here. Uh, accessory switch that's open if you were to add an option down the road, say a spotlight or something like that, we could power to that switch. Uh, off to the port side, uh, let's talk about your bilge pump for a second. Your bilge pump is the pump inside the bilge of the boat, okay, that pumps water out if water were to get in. So we get a heavy rainstorm or your boat is sinking, your uh, bilge pump is what pumps the water overboard, okay? Now, bilge pumps are hardwired to the battery, meaning if you left your boat in your slip with the engine battery switch off and your house battery switch off, it will still work. Okay. Now the bilge pump has something called a float switch. Float switch turns on and engages the pump when it senses water. Now, however, if one day that fails uh, or something along those lines, you can bypass that by simply hitting the aft bilge pump right there. Okay. Hitting that bump will, uh, button, excuse me, will engage the bilge pump. Uh, live well aft. Okay. Like I said, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but that's going to allow water to get into your live well uh, by simply hitting that button. Raw water wash down, we spoke about that earlier as well. You hit that, that's going to turn the pump on so you can rinse the deck off with whatever body of water, water that you're in. So if you're in Long Island Sound, you're going to have seawater going in there. If you're up the Connecticut River, you're going to have fresh water going in there. Uh, fresh water pump, again, if you want to use your fresh water shower, you need to have that pump on right there. Okay. Electronics, if your boat's equipped with electronics, we're going to power them to this switch right here, meaning you have to have the electronics button on in order for the power to go to your electronics. 
trim tabs. If you want to uh, activate your trim tabs, you can turn on the trim tab switch over here, and then these are your trim tabs right here. Trim tabs are meant for leveling the boat left to right, not getting the boat up on plane, uh, unlike what most people think. Okay, so if you're on a boat with three guys and the boat's leaning towards the right because you're all on one side, you would simply hit bow down on the port side, and that will level the boat out. Okay, each side is indicated with these red lights along the side. So you can always know where your trim tab level's at. The nice thing about the Robalo is when you turn your engine key off, okay, those trim tabs automatically go up. Okay, so if you go back up on plane, you have to readjust it uh, after you turn your boat off. Okay. Last but not least over here is an accessory switch right here. Okay. Again, if we were to add a secondary option down the road, we could plug a uh, hardwire to that switch right there, like a spotlight or something along those lines. All right, you have a glove compartment right here, which is good for a cell phone or a wallet. You have your stereo right here. Uh, biggest thing people ask me is how to pair it with my phone. Simple, you go to BT, Bluetooth audio. You simply go to your settings on your phone. It'll say Clarion, you attach it, you're good to go, okay? Uh, this has AM capabilities, FM capabilities, um, as well and Sirius XM if you are a subscriber. Additionally, it has an auxiliary cord which is right here just to the right of it, okay? So you simply plug your cord in there uh, and you could transmit your music that way if you don't have Bluetooth uh, for whatever reason. Okay, right here you have two USBs so if you wanted to charge your phone you could do so that way. And right here you have your 12 volt plug. Again, that's good for like a handheld spotlight or if you have a car charger you'd rather use for your phone, you could plug it in right there. Talking about the steering wheel for a second, uh, this is a nice steering wheel with an adjustable angle. So if you're docking, you might want a different angle if you're just driving, uh, depending you know, how, how much of an angle you want. Simply push this lever down, okay, and you can adjust the angle that way. Now, this is a hydraulic steering boat, meaning it has hydraulic steering, so it has hydraulic steering fluid. Okay, what you simply do is if you ever need to add fluid or you're running low or there's a leak, you simply go right here, unscrew that cap, Okay, and in your owner's bag, there's going to be a clear hose with an end on it. That end plugs right in. You then take a quart of steering fluid, drug steering fluid, screw it in, simply push it in. Okay, and that's going to purge the system. Okay, while you do that, you spin the wheel, get any air bubbles out. Uh, we don't see this issue a lot, but it's nice to easy access if that issue were to happen. One thing I want to talk about is the Yamaha gauge, okay? This gauge can give you all your engine data, fuel flow, hours, things you need, okay? This will give you your trip. You can log trips, how far you've been. It can log how much fuel you've used, okay? Uh, the biggest thing gonna, you're going to use this for is your fuel economy, okay? Your speed uh, and your mileage, so current mileage, how many miles per gallon the boat's getting. Additionally, this will tell you the level of the tank in the boat. Uh, how much fuel is in the boat. So this is a really important feature uh, that automatically turns on as soon as you turn on your engine. Okay, so you obviously you bought an R230. You love the big casting platform on the back of the boat. It's one of the best features about this rig. Okay, what's really nice though is when you lift this compartment up right here, you do one more lift up, the seat stays up like so. You have your live well right here, okay, on tension hinges, okay? So your live well is right here. If you want to fill it, you use your live well light. You do everything on the dash, which we spoke about earlier. Moving back here, you lift this up. You lift this seat up right here. And if you pull out this tray, which you can use for storage, this gives you fantastic access to your bilge. Best in class access, hands down, okay? So right here, you have your engine battery, your house battery, okay? Pretty self-explanatory. Right here's your bilge pump. Now you see that white, this guy right here? That's your float switch, okay? So when that goes on, see how they hear the pump running? When water rises up, that engages that float switch. That right there is a piece that you can bypass if you need to, okay, by using the aft bilge pump. Right here, your wash down uh, through hole. So on the back side of that pump, you're going to see a ball valve, okay? If the valve is perpendicular, meaning a 90 degree angle to the hose, it's closed. Okay, the only time you really have that closed is if there were a leak or something like that and you wanted to kill water going to it. Otherwise, most people leave it open all the time, but it's good to inspect it, make sure it's not leaking. Okay, back here, you're going to see your fuel filter. Okay, nice easy access. And to the left over here, you're going to see your primer bulb. Now, your primer bulb right there, you're only going to use if you need to prime fuel to the engine. Since this is a four stroke, there's no need to pump the ball or choke it or anything like that. Okay, so the only time you would need to prime the fuel is you need to get fuel from the tank to the engine. One thing I do want to talk about is right over here. You see, this guy right here is your raw, raw water in your live well pump. 
Okay. Now, if you look back, you'll see the white canister with the clear bowl on the bottom of the screen. That's your C strainer, okay? Meaning that is the screen or the protectant uh, to make sure that your pump doesn't suck in any seaweed or debris from the water. Now, over time, that will fill with junk collected from the ocean or whatever body of water you're in. So you simply unscrew that, okay, pull it out and clean it out and screw it back on and you'll be good to go. One other really important feature right here is access to your fuel tank, okay? People ask me all the time where the fuel sender is on their tanks. This boat, super easy to get to, right here. So your fuel sender is what measures your fuel capacity. Uh, if that were to fail over time, unlikely it being a brand new boat, but if it were to fail, you simply unscrew that, measure it, and we can get you a new one. Off to the starboard side under the uh, back seat, I pulled the bucket out. And if you look down there, you're going to see your fresh water tank, you're going to see your fresh water pump. Uh, and additionally, you'll see straight down right here, underneath this white circle right there, that's your strainer for your fresh water. So over time, if you need to clean any debris out of that, you can simply do so the same way I explained by doing it from the live well pump. Okay. Off to the port side of the boat, this is where we're going to fuel your boat full of fuel. You see the cap right here with the fuel indicator on it. You simply push in this black plastic end on it and it opens up the cap. You fill the boat. Uh, when it goes time to shut the cap, you need to listen for the click. Okay, if it doesn't click, it's not closed, and foreign debris can get in there and cause you problems. Let's focus up here now at the bow of the boat. Uh, the bow seating area is best in class on this Rabal. It's part of the reason why it's a best seller for us. Uh, to get these backrests off, you simply pull this little black pin out and lift up on the latch, okay? That's how easy it is to get these uh, backrests on and off. Moving forward, okay, you simply open this right here uh, for your coolers, okay? Uh, these drain overboard, okay, so ice, whatever you want, nothing's going to go in the bills, it go straight overboard. So a really nice feature um, in that regard right there. Same on that side right here, you have floor storage under here, okay, good for bucket, uh, your lines, your fenders, anything like that. Really good, really nice feature uh, right there. Moving up to the bow of the boat, okay, uh, let's talk about the anchor locker for a second. If you look straight down, you're going to see two bolts, okay, and a round eye, okay. You tie the end of your anchor to that. That way, if you were to throw your anchor out, uh, you don't have it tied back, obviously, you're going to lose your anchor, okay. You do that, uh, as soon as you let as much anchor line out as you want, you're going to tie it off to either cleat, okay, and that'll help swing the boat in whichever way. Of uh, the wind or the tide is going to dictate for you. Talking about the head of the boat, okay? Simply opens up right here. In your owner's bag, you'll have a set of keys where this is lockable. You have your porta potty right there, okay? You have a little light right here if you want to use that. Um, right over there, you're going to see you have your uh, bow filler piece and table, okay? So your cushion goes on this side tables on that side. Now, for your table, you're going to you have two legs right here, okay? You have a tall leg which is for your table which goes in, locks in right here using that same black pin I described earlier for the backrest. Okay? Once you do that, you simply slide the female end of that table, the aluminum end, onto that pole and that's your table, okay? Now, if you want to use your filler piece, you simply take off that tall leg, put the bottom shorter leg in there, do the same thing, put the table on, and then put the cushion on, okay? Then this whole area right here is gonna be a giant sun pad for you. This is how we insert the table. This piece slides in here, you pull the pin out, latches in right there, okay? Like I said, you take this end, put it in, there's our table. Now that we saw how the bow table works, let's see how the bow filler piece works. Same idea, you slide this piece in, pull the, pull the black, knob out, okay, and this is going to slide in, same way, okay, locks in, this table goes, or this side goes down, and we simply put this cushion right here, now you have a giant filler section. Alright guys, last thing we need to talk about is the braking on the Yamaha motor. For the first 10 hours of use, Every five minutes, you have to vary the throttle speed, meaning if you're cruising at 4,000 RPM after five minutes, bump it down to 3,800 RPM or bump it up to 4,500 RPM, okay? And in that first 10 hours, do not run it wide open. After 10 hours, 
you can run it however you want to. There's no RPM restrictions and with time and speed, okay? At 20 hours, you do a 20 hour check. Now at our dealership, what we do is we do an oil change, change your oil, change your filter, and we change your gear oil as well as give it a multi-point inspection to ensure it gives you years of trouble-free use. All right, guys, thanks for watching our digital delivery on the Roballo R230. Hope you learned a lot. Bet you guys thought I forgot the most important part, and that is your drain plug. If you look down at the bottom of the boat, right here is where your drain plug goes. Now, if your boat is stored on land, that drain plug doesn't have to be in. Any water that gets in the bilge of the boat will simply come out the back. However, if you're in the water and you don't have that drain plug in, you're going to have an issue. Always make sure that drain plug's in when the boat's in the water.